to the service. Do me the favor of calling a friend, a loved one, or somebody around the neighborhood and ask them to tune to this radio station right now. Life is flowing through the airwaves. Our social media community, like you've always done, help me share the videos, put them on all available platforms, join as many groups as possible. Let's get the word around the world. We also want to welcome all our campuses around the world for joining the service tonight, wherever you're watching. We're excited to have you here tonight. Amen. Is there anybody in the service excited about the word of the Lord tonight? Can we celebrate the word with a shout? Glory! Amen! Well, grab your phone, your notebook, your Bible, and you can be seated with your sweet, smart self as we get into the word of his grace tonight. Uh -uh. Glory to God. All right, so we began to look at in Christ realities. But just before we get in the word, help me share the videos on your pages and just get the word around the world. We're looking at Brother Paul's revelation of identification. Brother Paul's revelation of identification. And we've been examining the signature of the Pauline theology, which is in Christ, which is our identification. The book of 2 Peter chapter 3, verse number 15 and 16. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 and 16. An account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. Next verse. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things in which are some things are hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, to their own destruction. So we began to examine, you know, Brother Paul's, you know, epistles or the revelation of Brother Paul. We've taken time to cover quite some grounds. We have looked at Brother Paul's teachings and Jesus' teachings and the teachings of Moses. And if you've been carefully following, you remember I told you that Jesus always taught beginning at Moses and all the prophets. So Jesus' theology was Moses' theology. And then looking at Brother Paul's theology, in John chapter 16, verse number 12, John chapter 16, verse number 12, Jesus speaking about what was to happen after his resurrection said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Next verse. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, the pneuma aletia, when he is come, he will guide you into all the truth, for he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever you shall hear, that shall you speak, and he will show you things to come. He will show you things to come. Now yesterday we rounded off somewhere where we began to look at the spirit that Jesus spoke about and the spirit that brother Paul spoke about in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse number 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 4. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. And then we said the word demonstration of the spirit is the Greek word apodexis. It means to flash forth light on a surface. So that it can be seen. To flash forth light on a surface. So that it can be seen. Who is playing with our cameras there? What's the problem with you people? All of you in the camera department. You don't know what you're doing or what. Why are you dancing around with our cameras? Praise God. Maybe we need some people to lay hands on those people. now. John chapter 16 where we read... We began to talk about that word apodexis. It means to flash forth light on a surface so that it can be seen. And that's exactly what Jesus meant by spirit of truth. The word pneuma aletia. And Paul uses the same phrase. So let's explore a place like 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse number 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. But as it is written, I had not seen nor ear heard. Neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for those that love him. 
the truth now we said is in the Old Testament or in the scriptures. Now, Brother Peter said, Brother Paul had a Sophia, an insight, a wisdom about the way he communicated salvation. That there's an insight. So we want to explore that insight tonight. Now, 1 Corinthians 2, now where we just read, was Brother Paul making reference to Isaiah's prophecy. Now look at verse 10 of that 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. But God had revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit, did you observe? The spirit searcheth all things. Yea, the deep things of God. The spirit. Question. The same spirit Jesus spoke about when he, the spirit of truth, is come. The spirit, the same spirit. Okay, now, look at verse 11. <clears throat> same spirit. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. Next verse. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Next verse. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Next verse. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Next verse. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Yea, he himself is judged of no man. Next verse. Oh, I love this one. For who had known the mind of the Lord, that he, might, that he may instruct him. But we have the sumbabizo of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. So the mind of Christ is the same as the spirit of truth. We have the understanding of Christ. The mind there is not mind for school, is understanding of Christ. And that word mind of Christ is the same as the spirit of truth or revelation. In that John 16, 13. How be it when he is come, he will guide you into all the truth. The mind of Christ. The revelation. The spirit of truth. Numa aletia. So we can call the epistles the news of Christ or the mind of Christ. What is written about Christ in the Old Testament without concealing a single detail is what we call the epistles. What is written about Christ in the Old Testament without concealing a single detail. And just like Jesus says, about that spirit of truth, he will guide you into all of the truth. That is what we call the New Testament or the spirit of truth or post-resurrection realities. Brother Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 now says, you are the temple of God. Why? For the spirit of God dwells in you. You are the temple of God. For the spirit of God dwells in you. Just like Jesus said, he will dwell in you. He will be with you and he will be in you. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 12. Look at the way brother Paul puts it. 1 Corinthians 2 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. We have received the spirit of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So the spirit dwells in you. 1 Corinthians 3, 16. All right. Jesus said he will dwell in you. And brother Paul now in 1 Corinthians 12, 2, 12 says we have received the spirit of God. For example, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 5. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness. 
and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. And then shall every man have praise of God. So Jesus says, you, you know, when talking to those guys in the book of Luke who said, let's command fire to come down. He says, you know not what manner of spirit you are. That explains the principle of action. You know not what manner of spirit you are. Now look at 1 Corinthians 6.11. See what brother Paul says in 1 Corinthians 6.11. And such were some of you, but you are washed. You are sanctified. You are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus. And by the spirit of God. 1 Corinthians 6.17 1 Corinthians 6, 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Pay attention to the spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Observe. Which is in you which you have of God and you are not your own you are washed you are sanctified you are justified by the spirit he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit know ye not you are the temple of, of God and the spirit of God dwells in you now look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse number 3 1 Corinthians 12, 3. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a cost. And that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. That's preaching. That is still Jesus' spirit in preaching. The spirit of Jesus in preaching. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 2, actions are brought in. 1 Corinthians 14, to he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, how be it in the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. Actions are brought in. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 14, you know, again, there are actions there. 1 Corinthians 14, 14. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. Then 1 Corinthians 15, 44. We're looking at actions of the spirit. 1 Corinthians 15, 44. <clears throat> it is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Next verse. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Now that word quickening spirit is the word life-giving spirit. A quickening spirit. A life-giving spirit. It's like some Christians who say, I speak life to my business. Wonderful. So the life of God doesn't have what to do. is to be waking businesses up. Life-giving spirit. The word here is the word zopayo. Zopayo. Z-O-O-P-O-I-E-O. Z-O-O-P-O-I-E-O. A word that is used strictly for raising the dead. Not raising dead things. Raising the dead. John 5, 21, you will see that word there. John chapter 5, verse 21. For as the Father raised up the dead and quickened them, even so the Son quickened whom he will. The Spirit. The Spirit raises the dead. The actions of the Spirit. Okay? Now, look at another scripture. Romans 4, 17. Abraham... Call it the things that be not as though they were. Even God who quickened the dead. 
Still talking about raising the dead. John 6.63 Abraham's body. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Look at 1 Corinthians 15.22 about the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Look at verse 36 of the same chapter. Verse 36. Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. Resurrection of the dead. 2 Corinthians 3, 6 for further studies at home. 2 Corinthians 3, 6. Galatians 3, 21. Galatians 3.21, 1 Peter 3.18, all about the resurrection of the dead. And we will deal with this later in the course of this study. But just for you to have an idea. So Paul delves into Adam almost explosively in his teachings. He delves into Adam. He uses the term Adam. Now the word Adam has no transliteration. Adam is Adam in Greek and in Hebrew. It's Adam in the Greek, it's Adam in the Hebrew. Adam here will mean humanity. Adam does not mean male or female. Adam means humanity. And we will probably look at this reality also. Now, in the Old Testament writings, the word Adam is used ten times. The word Adam is used ten times. And six of those is in Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5. Six of the ten times is in Genesis chapter 1 to chapter 5. Talking about the same person. However, in 1 Chronicles 1, 1, 1 Chronicles chapter 1 verse 1, it is used for history. It is used for history. In Joshua chapter 3 verse 16, it is used for a city. Joshua 3 16, Adam, is used for a city. In Job chapter 31 verse 33, it is used in Job's self-righteous pose. But in Hosea chapter 6 verse 7, I want us to look at that one. Hosea chapter 6 verse 7. But they like men have transgressed the covenant. They have, they, there have they dealt treacherously against me. Let's look at this. The word there is humanity. Because that's how Adam looks like. Or the word K Adam. Humanity. Humanity. This statement is quoted by Jesus. In Matthew chapter 9 verse 13. Matthew chapter 9 verse 13. But you go and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. Jesus was quoting from Hosea 6.6. 6. Put up Hosea chapter 6 verse 6 for me. <clears throat> Lord of scriptures good for your health. For I desired mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. Alright, so where again Jesus seems to put a disclaimer on the sacrifice of the temple. He says here, what, 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 what he desires is mercy, and most importantly, the knowledge. Which where he says men or Adam transgressed. Men or humanity or Adam transgressed. Which looks like what Paul was writing in Romans chapter 5 verse 14. Romans chapter 5 verse 14. After the similitude of Adam's transgression. After the similitude of Adam's transgression. You know, Paul is a user of that word, Adam. Then you will see that word used in Luke 3.38. Adam, the son of God. Luke 3.38. 
And of course, you will see that word used in Jude chapter 14. I mean, Jude verse 14. Jude verse 14. So, Brother Paul was the only person who did a didache or an explanation on Adam. In Romans 5, 14, he uses the word Adam twice. Paul's man. Romans 5, 12 explains Romans 5, 14. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men for that, all have sinned. And of course, you will find him using Adam in 1 Corinthians 15.22 and 1 Corinthians 15.45 Adam, humanity. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 13. Brother Paul still using that. 1 Timothy 2.13 For Adam was first formed, then Eve. Next verse. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. So Paul went to Genesis to explain the doctrine of salvation. And he began from Adam. That's very instructive. Now Paul's spirit definitely from all we have studied is Jesus' spirit. Are we right? Now, so Paul's spirit is Jesus' spirit. Jesus' spirit is unconcealed. When he comes, he will guide you into all of the truth. And brother Paul now saying, the deep things of God have been made known to us. So Jesus leads credence to the fact that the spirit of truth will unveil the Old Testament writings to us. And Paul will tell you, I didn't receive it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus. So there are things unveiled by the spirit in the Old Testament. Does brother Paul have authority to speak like that? Exactly. Jesus just said, when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all of the truth. So exactly, brother Paul was right. Now, that it will not be found in the four gospels, it has not been taught extensively like Paul has done in the epistles. What Jesus said, the spirit of truth will guide you into all the truth. So listen carefully. The spirit therefore gives clarity to all those things. That means in the epistles, we will have clarity on the things Jesus taught and on the things Moses taught. In the epistles, there is, there is clarity. Just like Jesus said, the spirit of truth will be for information, clarity. He will teach you. He will guide you. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14, brother Paul now confirms what Jesus said. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse number 14. Put it up for me. 1 Corinthians 2 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God... For they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Now, give me the next verse. <clears throat> but he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judge of no man. Give me verse 13 of the same chapter 2. Observe verse 13. 1 Corinthians 2.13 Which things also we speak not in the wisdom not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth but which the Holy Ghost teacheth comparing spiritual things pneumaticus spiritual things with spiritual persons Paul spiritual so brother Paul spiritual will be the same with Jesus' spiritual. 
The word pneumaticos. Things of the spirit. Pneumaticos. Pneuma T-I-K-O-S. Pneumaticos. Pneuma aletia. Pneumaticos. The spirit of truth. The things of the spirit. Now, Jesus said two things of the spirit. Number one, indwelling. Number two, information. He will dwell in you. Number two, he will guide you into all truth. And brother Paul's indwelling will refer to the spirit dwelling in a man too. And the man will now be referred to based on the spirit that dwells in him. And the second thing will be information. He dwells in you. He guides you into all the truth. He dwells in you. He brings to your knowledge the things. All the things. That are contained in the scriptures. Now. The scriptures to take down. Is John 14, 16. John chapter 14. Verse number 16. And 17. Then John chapter 16, verse 7 to 14. John 16, 7 to 14. Paul uses the same way to explain spirituals. A word that is almost monopolized by brother Paul and Peter. Look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. Peter talking about spiritual stuff. 1 Peter 2, 5. You also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices. To offer up spiritual sacrifices. So outside that, only Paul uses the word spirituals. Spiritual house to offer up spiritual sacrifices. Now if you observe, brother Paul uses spiritual gifts in Romans 1.11. I long to see you that I may impart into you some spiritual gifts. To the end, you may be established. Then you can take down Romans 7 verse 4. Romans chapter 7 verse 4. Romans 15 27. How the gospel becomes a spiritual blessing. The gospel becomes a spiritual blessing. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 13 to 16. Spirituals. Just like Jesus will use it for persons and for information. Now how can that be Jesus? Because Jesus said, The works that I do shall you do and greater works than these shall you do because I go to my father. Then he says, I give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Now those two scriptures Jesus gave us in John chapter 14 is brother Paul's 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 13 and 14. Greater works than these, spiritual I will give you another comforter to abide with you forever. Paul calls it spiritual things of the spirit. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Things of the spirit again. Acts 1 8. Put it up for me. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And... You shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Now please pay attention to this. Paul now pens it in his own wisdom. The wisdom given to him by God, he calls it things of the spirit. Things of the spirit. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Brother Paul calls that things of the spirit. So question, which spirit? 
the spirit of truth that Jesus spoke about. The spirit of truth that Jesus spoke about. Which came upon them on the day of Pentecost in utterance. Of course, you know, I have told you that in the book of Acts, if you see the word come upon, is talking about utterance, tongues. Now, in 1 Corinthians 14, 37, you will see now he's talking about persons. 1 Corinthians 14, 37. If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that are right unto you are the commandments of the Lord. A prophet, spiritual. 1 Corinthians 14, 1. Desire spirituals. Desire spirituals. 1 Corinthians 15, 44 to 48. The natural and the spiritual. Galatians chapter 6 verse 1. If a man be overtaken in a fault, he that is spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest you be tempted. Spiritual. Conduct. Ephesians 1 3, spiritual blessings. Ephesians 1 3, spiritual blessings. Ephesians 5 19, spiritual songs. Spiritual songs. Ephesians 6 12, spiritual wickedness. This one is negative, right? <laughs> Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. Spiritual wisdom. Colossians 1 9. Colossians 3 16. Spiritual songs. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 5. You are all a spiritual house to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Of course, you know that he was there when Jesus said that the spirit of truth to guide into all truth. I mean Peter. Peter was there when Jesus said it. So it was easy for Peter to understand the concept of spiritual house, offering of spiritual sacrifices. Alright, so persons, things, information, are you here? Okay. <clears throat> he will make you what you are, the spirit of truth, and he will guide you into all the truth. So we receive spiritual information and we are now spiritual by the indwelling. We speak, receive spiritual information and we are now spiritual by the indwelling. And Brother Paul's language explains that in more detail. So the question now will be, how did Paul get all of his verbiage from his vocabulary, of course? From his vocabulary. The verbiage of Brother Paul came from his vocabulary. That's why Peter calls it an insight, a sophia, a sophizo, a wisdom. He will guide into all the truth. He will give them the right terms the spirit of truth will give them the right terms and it will give them the mode of communication. And Peter recognizes that in brother Paul. So if you don't use, if you never saw Jesus use the word spiritual, he used it in Paul. If Jesus never used the word spiritual, he used it in Paul. And if he never used the word apodexis, he used it in Paul. It was the same thing that they said. There was no divergence at all. Now, a few days ago, we were examining a term, heaven. For example, we have seen that just like Jesus 
Paul wrote a lot from the book of Exodus. A lot. The first three chapters in Genesis are critical to Christian doctrine. Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3 are critical to Christian doctrine. Please, it's very important. Don't miss this at all. The use of light, the use of life, the use of darkness, light, life, darkness, mankind... We've established that they are spiritual principles. Light, darkness. And we said that in the midst of natural things, we see the use of light and darkness in the first three chapters of Genesis. Genesis 1, Genesis chapter 2, Genesis chapter 3. Then we have what Moses called the tree of life. Then we have the book of life. Moses was the first person who introduced the concept of the book of life. So we have tree of life. We have book of life. Well, let me advise you. Just stay with life. Stay with life. Whether it is tree or book. The chair of life, the bread of life, the water of life, the important thing is they are all life. So stay with life. Now, we probably have to pierce a bit into Moses' thinking, should we? Should we break into Moses' mindset? Let's, let's see what his thinking was like. Seeing that there was no one in the Bible that did not learn his vocabulary. Jesus learned Moses, Paul learned Moses, Peter, everybody learned Moses. The prophets all learned Moses. So let's get into his mind. Because Moses is the Akai, is the beginning. Moses is the Bereshit of all writing. The Bereshit. So if it's not found in Moses' writing, whatever you are teaching is error. Anything you are teaching that is not found in Moses' writing is error. Jesus taught from his writings. He used expressions and Paul also did, both of them. So the first three chapters therefore are important in teaching doctrine. Sometimes we might need to explain Moses. For example, Moses wrote about rest. And interestingly, in Genesis chapter 2, he says, God rested. Then he now gave it as a commandment <laughs> in Exodus 20. God rested. Now listen carefully. That rest has nothing to do with a day. Moses in the beginning, it wasn't a day. The rest was found in God. Look at Genesis chapter 2 verse 2 and 3 quickly. Genesis chapter 2 verse 2 and 3. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. Verse 3. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Now, so the rest was found in God. Not in a day. Moses wrote about the serpent. And we will look at this a bit later on the serpent. In Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 12 to 14. Moses talks about life and death. Life and death. He said I set before you life and death. Then he said choose life. 
And that life is the same thing he represents in Genesis chapter 2. All over again. As though he was talking to Adam, but he was actually talking to humanity. Humanity. And Jesus uses the same term in his language life. You know, in his language. Life, death, life, death. He that believeth me has passed from death to life. I am the resurrection and the life. If he were dead, he shall live. Where did Jesus get that from? Moses. Getting clear? So those three chapters of Genesis are the foundation of Bible doctrine. Because everybody got his verbiage and vocabulary from Moses. So let's look into one of the things in his vocabulary. And that is the term heaven and earth. Like I said the other day, if you grew up like me, you are likely to believe that heaven is where people go when they die. Because that's what we are taught. The man has died. He has gone to heaven. When people die, we just go to their family and tell them, there's no need for crying too much. We know where he is. He has gone to heaven. <laughs> the one that baffles me more is the people that die and go to heaven in a vision and come back. That one baffles me. Or oh, the people that just sleep and wake up and say that I was in heaven. Have you met such people? They sleep. They wake up. They say that I was in heaven for one hour. Some die and wake up. Some go into a coma for a few hours or day. They wake up and say, I saw wonderful things. And you know, back in the days, the churches would gather and be listening to somebody tell them the story of how you went to heaven. How many of you have been in those services? You don't like stories. See, as I was going, it was light, light, everywhere light. Then I saw people inside hell crying with chains. The angel said, that is hell. Then I saw heaven on the other side. Have you had such kind of stories? That one baffles me more. But then the first person who mentions heaven and earth again is Moses. So, the term heaven is used many times enough for you not to miss it. It's used 320 times in the Old Testament. But the first mention is important to us. The first mention of the word heaven and earth. So Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. That's the first mention. Put it up for me. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Hmm. We need to tread cautiously at this point please and if you are sleeping you better wake up now because this has confused many people it appears like God created the heaven and the earth then after creating the heaven and the earth then the earth was without void there are theories someone said God created heaven and earth then Satan came and destroyed it so God recreated it. Another theory said God created heaven and earth and the person he created was not in his own image. Man. So Satan came, destroyed him. Then God in recreating him said let us create man in our image. But don't forget Moses is writing about salvation. The moment you know that that is what he is writing, it becomes clear to you that the Bible is not a book of archaeology. The Bible is a book of salvation. So stop trying to find out where the moon, the sun, and the stars all appeared from. Because the mission of scripture is to unveil God's salvation plan. And you will have Jesus' writings to help you. You also have Brother Paul's writings to help you. So in the beginning, 
Are you ready? Moses' heaven and earth cannot be a planet. Moses' heaven and earth cannot be a planet because he later gives us the story of the planet creation. Moses' heaven and earth cannot be a planet. And that's why many people got it wrong. So what is Moses' heaven and earth? Because that should be the question. What is Moses' heaven and earth? Well, Moses' heaven and earth will be related to what he says in the post text. What Moses meant by heaven and earth will be explained in the post text. Because the next thing that follows is the earth was without form and void. The Hebrew word tohua bohu. Tohua bohu. Nothing, nothing. Tohua, so that you don't write nonsense, is T O H O W A B O H U. Tohua bohu. Nothing, nothing. And then darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and God said let there be light and there was light but what Jesus just said about light and what Paul just said about light has to be found in man Jesus never spoke about a light in the sky. And Paul never spoke about a light hanging in the atmosphere. The light of Jesus and the light of Paul were all situated in man. So Moses is writing about mankind. And if you miss that, then you become an archaeologist without proper training. Again, I will repeat it. That that heaven to so many people is where people go when they die. And this is usually what creates the mental block. Because the moment you start thinking of heaven as a place where dead people are gathered. <laughs> you know, like an advanced mortuary. Where everybody who dies he just traffic them into heaven and all dead people are sitting down in heaven. It's an advanced mortuary because they are dead. So they're there. <laughs> Praise God. Now watch this. In the four gospels, the word heaven appears 144, 141 times. And I'm going to stay with the King James Version. I'm going to stick to the King James Version on this because of the use of words. We have heaven and we have heavens. Heaven and heavens, plural, 141 times. Now I'm going to spread it for us. Matthew has heaven 71 times. Matthew used it a whole lot. 71 times. Mark uses the word heaven 11 times. Luke uses the word heaven 21 times. Now think about this. John uses the word heaven 10 times. That's instructive. John, only 10. You know, I told you his writing was largely didactic. And yet he uses the word heaven 10 times. So we have to look at the one who says it, who says it the most and the one who says it the least. And see their references on the word heaven. Of course, then we have the word heavens, plural, heavens. Look at Matthew 4, 17. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. Quickly. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The word at hand means approaching. That's in Jesus' preaching. Now look at Matthew chapter 5, verse 34. Please pay attention. Matthew chapter 5, verse 34. 
But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne. That's interesting. It is God's throne. Matthew chapter 16, verse 17, 18, and 19. My father, which is where? In heaven. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father, which is in heaven. Now let's think. If Peter did not die, how was it revealed to him? If heaven is a place where dead people go, but Peter just got a revelation from heaven without dying. Blessed art thou, Simon Bajona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father. So my Father in heaven revealed to Peter on earth things of heaven. All right. Verse 18 and 19. Matthew 16. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Next verse. And Peter on earth, I will give thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. How can you be holding heaven keys on earth? You have not died. Hmm? You following? Put it up. I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven and with the keys whatever you shall bind on earth. So the keys of heaven can be used on earth. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So you have the keys of heaven where? On earth. And you can use it where? On earth. And when you use it on earth, the effect on the earth is affecting heaven. Huh. Stay with me. But he just told you that my father is in there. My father is in heaven. Then he says, but the key will be given to you. And then he says to Peter, my father in heaven has revealed it to you on earth. Okay. Are you still here? There's no way Peter will have received Revelation from heaven if he was not there. And there's no way Peter will have received a key from heaven if he was not there. And there's no way Peter will use the key of heaven and it will affect heaven and earth if he was not there. So again, Matthew 18.10. Matthew 18, 10. Take it that you despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven they are on earth. Too. Little ones, they are on earth. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. Look at verse 18 of the same chapter. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you shall lose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Look at verse 23. Same chapter. 
Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king which will take account of his servants. The kingdom of heaven. A phrase we can easily lose. The kingdom of heaven. The word kingdom is the word basileo. Reign or rule. Kingdom is not a place. Kingdom is a reign or a rule. So already it seems like Jesus teaches what is called heaven. And in his teaching, heaven is closer than what we were thinking. Huh? Now, look at John. Some key texts. John 1, 51. John 1, 51. And he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter you shall see heaven open. <laughs> How will you see heaven open if you are not there? <laughs> you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. I said that to say this. Paul's spirituals is from Paul's the spirit. His spirituals are from his use of the spirit and Paul's the spirit is Jesus's the spirit and one of the work of the spirit of truth is he will guide you into all the truth so in other words Jesus has given Paul the liberty to use the word spiritual that is things of the spirit or things the spirit will give or things the spirit will say. Is that, is that right? Hello, is that right? Okay. So we will use the same rule with the word heaven. John 1 51 again. And he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter you shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. When he says heaven open, it's a word for what you will now see. Something that is visible. Something that is around. You will see heaven open. That means it's visible. That means it's around. You are now seeing it. If I see it open, it means I will have access to it. If I see it open. So, by using the word heaven open, it means that it was around them around them. You will see heaven open. John 3.13 Stay with me. John 3.13 And no man hath ascended up into heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. John 6.32 Stay with me. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. So you are on earth and you have access to the true bread from heaven. You are on earth and you are seeing heaven open. You are on earth and you are using the keys of heaven. Am I communicating? Yeah? 
You are using the keys of heaven. <laughs> John 6.50. John chapter 6 verse 50. Oh, glory to God. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. So a man will eat bread out of heaven. Man has keys of heaven. Man is eating bread from heaven. Man is seeing heaven opened. What man is doing on earth is affecting heaven. Teaching good? He now talks about the living bread which is his flesh and blood. Now, if you observe, Jesus never taught heaven as a planet. You know, he never. I was taught that in CRK. And I was taught that, you know, uh, heaven is a place where we will go like a planet. That you, there are many galaxies, you know, in the outer space. Many galaxies, you know. That even the sun alone which is the little star among all stars. It's about 1,000, is it 1,000 or how many thousand suns? I mean, how many thousand earth to make one sun? So imagine, and the, the sun is the closest to the earth. So imagine others, you know, galaxies up there. And the heaven is above. Jesus never used heaven as a planet. He never taught it. Let me say it again. There's nowhere in the New Testament writings where he says a man dies and goes to heaven. It's just an old tradition that nobody has ever challenged. So from the sayings of Jesus, it appears that heaven was amongst men. Amongst men. In the book of Acts, we have 24 times the word heaven is used. 24. The first one is in Acts 1.11. A round up. Acts 1.11. Which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go where? Into heaven heaven. Look at Acts 2, 2. Acts chapter 2 verse 2. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. Bread of heaven, key of heaven, heaven is open, look into heaven. Eh? Now, sound from heaven. You didn't do geography. Eh? You did geography. Mars is part of the earth. They are all part of the earth. The solar systems are all part of the earth. Because that was the way God designed it from the beginning of time that heaven and earth together is seen that separated them. I'm teaching good. And that's the way Jesus taught it. And that is the way Moses taught it. Now they are hearing a sound from heaven. That means it's like saying a sound came from the road. Well, some people try to explain it by saying there's no distance in the spirit realm. <laughs> Acts 2.5 I'm rounding off. Acts 2 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. This one is atmospheric, atmospheric heaven. So we are sure that Acts 2 2 and Acts 2 5 are now referring to the same heaven. One is atmospheric, the other one we will see in a moment. Look at Acts 3 21. 
whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Talking about Jesus. And then that Jesus, the heavens received. What received Jesus? The heavens. Who poured out his spirit upon all flesh? Eh? Who is the baptizer with the Holy Ghost? I want you to say, let the radio audience hear you. So if Jesus is in heaven and he poured out his spirit out of heaven upon upon us where are we? Hallelujah. Let's take this last one. Acts 7.55. We continue from there tomorrow. Acts 7.55. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven. He looked up into heaven while he was standing on the ground. <laughs> you are not hearing. He's standing on the ground and he looked into heaven. <laughs> he looked where? Okay, all of you. Look into heaven. He looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw. He's standing in one place and he's seen into heaven. That can be a planet. Okay, how I many of you can see into Jupiter now? Which is even part of the earth. But Stephen saw the glory of God. He saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Was he looking into the sky? Huh? Talk to me, Power City. Was he looking into the sky? What Stephen saw, was it a revelation? Huh? Was it a revelation? And in the revelation, did he look far to see? Where did he see? Where he was standing? And where he was standing, what did he see? He saw Jesus. And Jesus was where? Right where he was standing. Did he travel to look into heaven? Right where he was standing. Now, keep that somewhere. We will build on that tomorrow. I have many things to say to you on heaven and you will bear it. <laughs> glory to God. I said glory to God. Are we getting blessed? Stand on your feet. Let's pray tonight. Turn to your neighbor and say, hey neighbor. It's getting clear. Keys of heaven. Use on earth affecting heaven, sound from heaven, door of heaven opened. He saw into heaven, he saw Jesus standing. Jesus never taught heaven as a planet, neither did any apostle teach heaven as a planet. They taught heaven the same way Moses taught it. Amen. Are you blessed? Say with me, I am in heaven right now. The reality of heaven in my heart right now. And I declare revelation knowledge is growing big in my heart. The realities that are mine in Christ Jesus are being made manifest as I grow in understanding. And I decree and I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that every day I grow, I'm becoming more equipped to make manifest the savor of God's knowledge in every place. I didn't hear a powerful amen.
Lift your two hands. Let's begin to give God praise and thanks and worship him for making heaven a reality to us. Go ahead, lift your hands and begin to give him praise. Begin to appreciate God for all the blessings that you have in Christ Jesus. All the special blessings that you have in Christ Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to thank God and appreciate Him that we are in Him justified. He is in us glorified. We have the light of Christ. We have the life of Christ. We walk in light. We walk in knowledge. Let us begin to thank God for the revelation that we have in this house in the past days that we are growing in knowledge. We are growing in understanding that the revelation of Jesus Christ is rising big in us on a daily basis in this house. Open your mouth and begin to acknowledge that. Begin to acknowledge Christ. Acknowledge the fact that we carry heaven in us. That heaven is inside of us. We rule from heaven. We rule from that control room of heaven. In heaven we have that authority. In heaven we have that authority. The life of Christ is flowing in us. The life of Jesus is flowing in us. And we walk in that life. We walk in that life. We, in that life. we have no question of stumbling. 